September 30th, 2012. More than 200 people have gathered at a venerable vocational school in Fukuoka City in Kyushu. All of the umami substances were discovered by the Japanese. More than a century since the discovery, culinary experts from across the world are focusing on umami. The fifth basic taste, umami. Using the umami concept, richly flavored soup stock or dashi can be easily made. Famous Japanese chefs of all types of cuisine use a variety of ingredients to create new style dashi and umami rich dishes. And they'll be using delicious fresh ingredients from Kyushu. The chef's knowledge and techniques will draw out all sorts of umami. Let's begin. First, Dr. Kumiko Ninomiya explains the basics of umami. Today, I would like everyone to keep in mind that there are three major substances. Glutamate, inosinate, and guanolate. First, I'd like you all to experience umami. Everyone should have a tomato. To get a good sense of the flavor, I would like you to chew the tomato about 30 times, letting the taste spread around your tongue. Can you sense a vague taste on your tongue that's not sweet, sour, or bitter? The taste that is softly spreading across your tongue is umami. It's characterized by its way of causing salivation. Umami is found in a wide variety of ingredients, but one thing that can be said is that most vegetables have glutamate in them. Cheese is on this slide as well. This is because fermented products such as cheese as well as things like soy sauce, miso, Southeast Asian fish sauce, cured ham, and anchovies all contain glutamate. Meat and fish contain inosinate, and mushrooms like dried shiitake have guanolate. Categorizing them like this should make it easy to understand. One more important detail is that combining glutamate and inosinate, or glutamate and guanolate, increases the umami intensity by about eight times. This technique is used in making a variety of soup stocks, and it's called the synergistic effect. Our first guest chef is Yoshihiro Murata. He will demonstrate the umami synergistic effect. He's also working hard to disseminate the joys of Japanese cooking and umami across the world. First, he gives everyone some kombu or kelp dashi and bonito flakes. The bonito is called katsuobushi. Please drink just half of the kombu dashi soup stock. After that, put the katsuobushi on your tongue and wait for the inosinate to spread over your tongue. Then, drink the other half of the kombu dashi. Can you taste the katsuobushi much more than usual? The 96% glutamate and 4% inosinate combination causes a synergistic effect. The umami is about six times greater than usual. Next, he prepares an umami-rich version of traditional dashi. Leave the mixture at 60 degrees Celsius for an hour. By using this new method, you can get 30% more glutamate. The katsuoboshi is added below boiling point as well. After turning the heat off at 85 degrees Celsius, we put in the katsuoboshi. Then straining the mixture immediately achieves the kind of dashi we use in Kyoto these days. Following this top Japanese restaurant's traditional dashi is new style dashi. It's used abroad as well. What are the ingredients? After kombu, a tomato has the most glutamate. Making a dried tomato reduces the weight by about 90%. This means that its level of glutamate is about 10 times as high. 
about half as much as kombu contains. These are dried morel mushrooms. They have the next most guanolate after shiitake mushrooms and adding inosinate to these makes them taste better. For inosinate, we'll add chicken breast meat into this dashi. With the flame on, fat is floating to the surface, but straining the mixture will give us a clear dashi soup stock. The leftovers seem to be wasted, right? Afterwards, all you need to do is to put some seasoning in, recook it, and you can enjoy it. The color's rather dark compared with the Ichiban dashi. And finally, he brings out this item from Kyushu. This is grilled flying fish. Fish usually contain inosinate, but they're also richer in glutamate than katsuobushi. To keep it from getting a harsh flavor, he broils the fish and then boils it at 60 degrees Celsius for an hour along with kombu. This is flying fish soup stock. It's a great dashi. Mmm, so delicious. Each region has its own delicious foods, and I think that each area should have its own style of dashi. As a rule, combining glutamate and inosinate, or glutamate and guanolate, makes dashi taste better because of the synergistic effect. By adding various dashi to foods, they will also get healthier. That concludes my presentation. Thank you very much. Next up is Yuji Wakia. With his superior technique and insight, he's also working to contribute to society through food. To demonstrate the umami synergistic effects, he prepares a premium Chinese soup called Shangtang. For the soup stock, he chose Kurobuta pork and Torafugu, a kind of puffer fish, both famous Kyushu delicacies. And along with some umami-rich vegetables, he'll also use high-grade ham, jinhua ham. Ham made from jinhua pork is aged for more than a year and ferments. It thus has a lot of glutamate rather than inosinate. This rich soup has been served to everyone. First, please take in the aroma. Then drink it as you let it run slowly over your tongue. In Chinese cooking, soup stock is obtained in basically the same way. The umami substances from the kurobuta and jinhua ham cause the synergistic effect. Japanese stock has a light flavor, but Chinese stock tastes much richer. Using rich Chinese soup, he prepares the main dish. He boils baby bok choy for a bit and chills it right away. I squeeze out the water and put this delicious soup and some baby bok choy in a mixer. Chilled soup will work better. With this jade colored soup, we'll make a dish that uses scorched rice. First, we'll put in some fermented dongsai to bring out an aroma. Then, we put in some bamboo shoots and arrowhead. By frying them, the aroma comes out and transfers to the food. He then puts in the baby bok choy stalks and onion-flavored oil. There's glutamate in the stalks of the baby bok choy. When it has brought out the aroma, we immediately put in Shaoxing wine. It has umami too. Then we put in the soup along with starch and water. Then we pour this jade colored sauce on the scorched rice. We want our customers to enjoy the sound and wonderful aroma. Thank you very much. Last to present is Koji Shimomura, 
He's trained hard both in and out of Japan. Now he's working on his own French cuisine that incorporates the umami concept. So, what is umami in French cooking? We usually use raw ingredients to make French soup stock, so it takes a long time to make. To allow the audience to taste French soup stock, he used fresh vegetables from Kyushu to make bouillon. And to make the effects of umami easier to taste, he's only using a third of the usual amount of salt to make three different types. He began with only salted bouillon. The cup in the middle with an orange sticker is the salted bouillon with a pinch of umami seasoning added. Vegetables and umami seasoning both contain glutamate. So to enhance the umami, you may taste umami more clearly than the one with a yellow sticker. Finally, the cup with a green sticker. It's the salted bouillon with minced chicken breast added. The synergistic effect of glutamate and inosinate leverages the umami, so it should be easier to taste. French cuisine uses different umami ingredients than Japanese cuisine, but the concept is the same. Shimomura is pursuing light French cuisine, using less fat and oil than traditional French cuisine. He serves a variety of dishes that are low in calories, utilizing the umami concept. Capitalizing on umami substances, we can make dishes more delicious with efficiency. His main ingredient is white liver of Arita chicken from Saga Prefecture, which he'll use to make mousse. I soaked this in milk for about a day and a half. To minimize discoloration and preserve flavor, he avoids creating bubbles. Katsuo bushi in this paper-thin bread provides a touch of color. Two types of pepper are sprinkled in and it's finished. He brought the cups he uses at his restaurant in Tokyo, one for every attendee. Please, don't take the cups home with you. And please, don't stir the mousse when you eat it. Thank you. Following the demonstration, tasting boxes are served. Many staff members and students from Nakamura Culinary School gave their support to prepare and serve 200 tasting boxes. The flying fish soup stock is used to simmer vegetables. They're served cold. The umami and the dashi and the vegetables combine to create clear and mild flavors. The dried tomato and morel new style dashi is used for a savory egg custard. It brings out the flavor so well that one can't tell how it differs from traditional dashi. The jade colored Chinese soup using kurobuta and torafugu has a deep and complex flavor. Scorched rice can be sprinkled over the soup. The Arita chicken white liver mousse gives a vivid and vibrant taste in every bite because of its umami synergistic effect. Even with less oil and fat, this recipe retains the rich flavor of French cuisine. After the tasting, the chefs come out and answer questions. Their detailed responses earn a big round of applause from the attendees. あの、うまみっていう言葉自体は知ってたんですけれども、実際にこう体感できたっていうところがすごく、はい、今日来て良かったなって思いました。うん、金がね、興味を持ってましたのでね。で、この公演を聞いて、え、確信が持てて。楽
ちょっとのあのぐらいの飲んだ量だけで感じたりしたのですごいなと思いました今回あのとても分かりやすく豆を感じることができてで今後あの今飲食店してるんですけどここで生かしていけたらなって思います九州にはこういう情報がなかなか入ってこない部分が多いし自分宮崎なんですけど宮崎ってもうほとんど入ってこないんで。入ってこない分少しでもこう吸収したものを自分の中で考えてもっと進化させていけないいきたいなと思いました。The three umami substances discovered in Japan: glutamate, inosinate, and guanylate. Understanding the synergistic effects and how to use them can make dishes many times more delicious. Our audience was treated to a masterclass on umami today. The day ended with a full house full of umami energy.